Algebra 2, 6.7b, Rational Equations and Motion Problems. Now, it'll help you if you saw video 4.3 and if you've been following along, or if you've seen the previous videos for Chapter 6. There's 13 of them now. There's links in this video's description so you can watch them quickly. I don't want you to become lost or confused. So we learned in video 4.3, Chapter 4, that the formula for distance is d equals rt. That's distance equals the rate times the amount of time. And we can use this to get rational equations for time and for rate of speed. So d equals rt can be divided on both sides by that r. So we'll get d over r equals t, because we cancel out the r as a 1. And we can do the d equals rt and divide both sides by the t to get t over t equals 1 so that we'll have d over t equals r. I'm going to switch that formula around for us. We can use these to solve motion problems. We can write our equations and multiply each term by the LCD, that least common denominator, to solve. Now, we covered that in 6.6a, 6.6 and 6.7a, and those links are in the description also. We can also make a diagram or table to organize our information to solve it. We could even draw a picture, couldn't we? Either way, we need to clarify what the word problem is asking us and identify the data given to us. So the breakdown is we need to write our equation, multiply each term by that LCD, that least common denominator. We can make a table or draw a picture, couldn't we? We simplify it, and we check our answer. So here's our first one. It takes two hours to drive from Chicago to Bloomington, Illinois. It takes eight hours to make the same trip by bicycle. I don't know who would want to ride a bike that far. But how long will it take a car and a bicycle to meet? So they would meet somewhere in the middle of that distance, okay? If they were starting at opposite towns at the same time. So if you know from our previous video how we can write our equation, we write the car as one trip is two hours, so it's one trip over two. The bicycle is one trip in eight hours, so it's one over eight. And we set it to equal one trip over the amount of time it's going to take them to meet somewhere in the middle, OK? We need to find that least common denominator for a 2, an 8, and a t. We can use 8t. We multiply every single term, even this one on this side of the equal sign, by that 8t. We can write it over a 1, so we can just multiply straight across, right? So we get 8t over 2 which is a 4t, and this is an 8t over 8. This eliminates as a 1, so we just have a t. And this is 8t over t, and those two t's eliminate as a 1, so we just have an 8. We can combine like terms and simplify this to get a 5t equals 8. We divide each side by this coefficient 5, and we find out that the t is going to be 1 and 3 fifths hours. So after 1 and 3 fifths hours, they will meet at the same spot, OK? somewhere in between Chicago and Bloomington, Illinois. All right, let's try this one. We have two canoeists, and they paddle 10 miles upstream in five hours, and they make the return trip in only one hour. Well, if they paddled at a constant rate, what is the speed of the stream's current? So when they were going upstream, they were paddling against the current, so it was, took them longer. It took them five hours. It was harder. When they were Coming back on the return trip, it only took one hour because they were going with the current, see? So it went. It was easier to paddle, and they went faster. So we're going to let r equal the rate of the canoe in still water. We're going to let c equal the speed of the current of the stream. And we're going to use r minus c for when they were going upstream because they were fighting against it. And we're going to use r plus c because they were going with the current, so it's plus the current downstream, OK? So we've got r minus c is going to equal 10 miles in 5 hours, 10 over 5, that's a 2. And r plus c, when they're going with the current, is 10 miles in 1 hour, so that's 10 over 1, that's a 10. We add these two together, the negative of c and the positive c create additive inverses as a zero pair, so we end up with just 2r, see? And that's going to equal 2 plus 10, which is 12. We divide each side of this by this 2 coefficient, it cancels out as a 1, and we get r is equal to 6. Now we can substitute this 6 into the first equation, and we get 6 minus c equals 2. See? We can add a negative, c to, a negative 6 to each side of the equation to isolate this negative c here. So we add a negative 6, and we get 
negative c equals negative 4. Now remember there's an invisible 1 in front of that c, the invisible 1 coefficient, so we can divide each side by that negative of 1 so that we can get rid of this negative here. And the two negatives make a positive, so we end up with c equals 4. So we know the current's 4 miles per hour. All right? Here's one that's a little bit more involved, and we're going to draw pictures and make a table. So an airplane flies 1,062 kilometers with the wind. In the same amount of time, it can fly 738 kilometers per hour against the wind. So the speed of the plane in still air is 200 kilometers per hour. Find the rate of speed of the wind. So we think we need to find out what that wind speed is, don't we? And the plane's speed is 200 kilometers per hour. It flies 1,062 with the wind, it flies 738 against the wind. So let's draw a table to organize our information. We're going to let r equal that rate of speed of the wind. We could have used s for speed. We could have used w for wind. I'm going to use an r, okay? So we can stick with our drt thing. So here's the plane. With the wind, the speed increases, okay? So it went 1,062 kilometers per hour. So we have 200 plus r because it's going with the wind. So we plus the r in t hours. Now remember, that it's the same amount of time. So it's both going to be t hours. See that? The wind is going to decrease the speed when it goes against the wind. So it's against it is minus r. All right? So let's make a table here. We've got with the wind, our distance, rate, and time. And against the wind, our distance, rate, and time. And the times are the same, so we can use time equals distance over rate. Time equals the distance, 1062, over the rate, 200 plus r, and time equals 738 over 200 minus r. Now, we can substitute this for t. It says it equals t, so we'll put it here as t. Okay? So now we've got 1062 over 200 plus r is equal to 738 over 200 minus r. We need to find the least common denominator, which will be these, this pair right here in parentheses. We have to multiply each term by this pair, okay? So we're going to multiply the 1062 by this and the 738 by this and these by the ones, okay? Now if you look, you'll see 200 plus r and 200 plus r this one cancels out with this one as a 1, doesn't it? So we're just left with 200 minus r times 1062 on this side. This 200 minus r and this 200 minus r cancel out as a 1. So we're left with 738 times 200 plus r on that side. We use distributive property on both sides. And we get 212,400 minus 1,062R for this side, and 147,600 plus 738R on this side. Now, we need to isolate the R, and we need to combine like terms, don't we? So let's get the R to this side. So we're going we're gonna to add 1,062R to this side to create an additive inverse zero pair here. So all we have on this side is 212,400. We add these two together, we get 1,800. We drop down the 147,600. Now we need to get him over to this side, so we're going to add a negative 147,600 to each side. And when we subtract this from the 212,400, we get 68,400. And on this side, we have 1,800R. We need to isolate R, so we divide each side of the equation by this 1,800 coefficient. And 68,400 divided by 1,800 is 36. So we know r equals 36, and that's the kilometers per hour wind speed. What we do is we can check it by substituting 36 for r into the equations, and we'll find out that the t equals 4.5 for both of them, and it fits. Okay? So we solved it. Least common denominator, very important. Okay? So our next video is 6.8a, and we're going to solve rational formulas for a specific variable. I'm going to add this video to the Algebra 2 playlist, and there's going to be previous videos from Algebra 1 from last year that should help you. And 
that 4.3 video and all those chapter 6 videos, links will be in this video's description so you can just click on them, okay? So, remember, they're just one click away and it's up to you to use this information to help yourself, okay? I hope you're doing well. I hope you're having a good day and keep trying and I'll see you next video. Bye.